I'm Larry Parker, reporter for KSUN News on 95.9 FM, Wichita. I have the privilege and honor of interviewing the all-time leading scorer in Wichita State basketball history, the legendary Mr. Cleo Littleton. Uh, however, Mr. Littleton uh, accomplished this feat back in uh, 1955. Um, he scored a total of 2,164 points. The closest player, the, the only player to come close to that was Xavier McDaniel. He came 12 points shy of the legend's record, and he also did it without the three-point line. Uh, the current players today, Ron Baker, he is currently at 1145, 1,145 points in Van Fleet. He's sitting at 1060. Uh, Mr. Littleton also accomplished this during the days of Jim Crow laws and segregation. Um, it's a remarkable accomplishment <laughs> that still stands to this day. Uh, this is 2016. It's been a very long time, over 60 years since uh, anyone has came... Well, actually, over 30 years since anyone has come close to that record, but the record has been standing for a very long time. Uh, Mr. Littleton. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to come here and interview you at your place. Um, with that in mind, um, could you tell us what you had to endure in those days as a student athlete in the 50s? Yeah, Larry, it, it, was, it was kind of tough back there for all that. Not only, only me, but there was other African-Americans in other conferences doing the same thing that I was doing. Uh, the crowds were anti-black, I should say. I think I was called everything except Cleo Littleton. <laughs> And uh, the referees were a little afraid to call some of the fouls because of the crowds. And me, and in most instances, I was the only African-American in the, in the whole building. And so uh, I got the treatment, but uh, I had my teammates to stand by me and support me. And I survived. Definitely, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up here in Wichita, I had to, I met uh, Herc Coyne. Remember Herc Coyne? Oh, yeah. Good friend. Yeah, I um, I was at the YMCA playing a pickup game, Noon Ball. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I introduced myself and he introduced himself. And uh, later we started talking about you. <laughs> I hope it was good. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about her, please? Yeah, I heard her is, is a good sound player. He was one of the, the big men that Ralph Miller had. And, uh, he wasn't the type to dunk because we'd have been allowed to dunk back in those days anyway. But he played a pretty sound game, and uh, he was one of the guys that, uh, in my late my senior year, sort of looked after me. I, I said one of the guys that would bring me a sandwich out to the bus. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. When I met the guy, he spoke very well of you. He said uh, that. You guys grew up together and all that. And that's kind of what I took him as, as a person that would reach out regardless of what barriers there may lay between humans in a social construct or whatever. But Let me just interject. It, Herb was extremely well, but I had nine other teammates that pretty much did the same thing. And Herb, along with some of the other guys in my senior year that says, well, we'll just stay on the bus with Cleo and you bring us out a sandwich also. That's the type of guy he was, you know, and some of the other guys refused to go in the restaurant and eat with the rest of them. And it was kind of hurting for me because I, I don't want anybody giving me any sympathy. Go go take care of yourself. I'll take care of myself. That's understandable. <clears throat> That's very understandable. Um, sir, what was your major? I majored in State? physical education. I uh, minored in, in the, uh, psychology. Okay. And, well, I had a double, psychology and business. I originally started out as a business major, but the road trips eliminated all of that because in bookkeeping, it's a progressive type of situation. And you go on for two weeks, you come back, there are two chapters ahead of you. 
Gotcha. And my brain wasn't that sharp, so I switched to physical education and minored in, the, in business and psychology. Okay, I see. Okay, um, we see that you played for East High, East High School. East High, East High School. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wichita State. And in 1955, he was drafted in the fifth round by the Fort Wayne Pistons. He was the 38th overall pick. Could you tell us a little bit about that experience? Yeah, uh, Larry, I was very proud to be selected. And doing was at that particular time, in 1955, there were only five African Americans playing professional basketball. And all of those guys were up around New York and Rochester in that area. Uh, I think the very same year that the uh, Minneapolis uh, Lakers, then it was called, uh, had got one player off of the 55 team, and then the, the others went spread out, uh, Duke, Maurice uh, King, and all those other guys. But uh, it, it just wasn't any opportunity for African American unless you were extremely well. I came out as a forward center at 6'3", 185 pounds. There's other... African Americans who were drafted 6'10, 6'11, 215, 220 pounds. And gotcha. And they were playing the same position I was playing. Yeah. So it, it, it wouldn't have worked out, so I didn't attempt to honor the contract. I just stuck around, and then Vickers called me and said, We're going to start a semi pro here, and we want you to play. Then I fell into the same routine, being the only African American in our league. In the league? Yeah. We. We had to go to Seattle, Washington to find any more brothers that were playing ball. And Elgin they, Baylor. No, before him. I watched him play as, as a freshman at college. The guys told us to come down and watch the scrimmage, and he was just as good. I see. Yeah. Uh, would you, did you have the opportunity to play for the Harlem Globetrotters? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I, I was talked out of that by many people, and they were, at that particular time, willing to pay you thousand dollars a game but that automatically turned me into a pro and I couldn't play anything else now with the Vickers the semi pro they couldn't give you cash they gave you a job then gave you the cash uh, but uh, yeah I, I turned them down because they had me scheduled about 12 games which was twelve thousand dollars in Kansas and around the Wichita area and I, I chose not to do that I see I see yeah, that's, I see that uh, your number 13 was retired. What year was that, sir? What year did they retire your jersey? I'm trying to remember. It It was after, I think, they retired Stallworth and somebody else. And then someone mentioned, well, what about Cleo? And they said, oh, yeah, we'll retire his too. The all-time leading scorer in school history. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, let's retire his. But these guys, it's all they turned pro. I never turned pro. And so his recognition was much higher. And I accepted that. I understand. He was certainly the pioneer, the uh, the bricklayer for those guys and myself today, you know, and, and millions of others. You know, we definitely would like to thank you for your courage, and you I, know. I keep trying to remind everyone, Larry, that it was very hard and tough being the first in this area, but in other areas, there was another brother who was first in that area, but, but we all suffered the same. It wasn't any different than the punishment. Exactly. You know, uh, I know we're accustomed. Everybody says the first, you know, we've been hearing that for years. And, and you know, on the flip side of the coin, it's like, uh, it's it's the first <laughs> that the heads that be let do this. Yeah. 